I came to the UK from Nigeria four years ago. My husband sent for us, my three children and myself on a visitor visa. And then I had another child about two years ago. But my son is the only one who remembers Nigeria. You remember coming to the UK? I was only seven. But you remember a few things about how it was? Yeah, I was amazed because it was cold and it was December. And you know when you blow out the air, uh -huh. like, and you can see it? I kept doing that because I had never seen that before in Nigeria. <laughs> he's very gifted at school. You know, all of his teachers, they say to me, Oh, he's so talented. At first, I thought it would be hard because I didn't have any friends. But everyone in the school was so friendly. Some of them know about our situation. Sometimes I compare my life to my friends. I try not to though, because I start thinking in a negative way. So I try not to think about it most of the time. Okay, now you need to go and finish your homework. Off you go. With the younger ones, I don't really talk. Because you know how it is with little kids. They might be in the wrong place and they say the wrong thing at the wrong time. But with my eldest, he knows. One day he said to me that he doesn't want me to be upset. He doesn't want me to be sick. And that is why he doesn't ask me certain questions. The situation with my husband. Well, I have been verbally, physically, emotionally, in every area, abused. But I stuck it out because, because my status here would not allow me to get out and to get a house. And I thought that at least my children will have a roof over their heads. And also as a Christian, I believe that the family structure should consist of a father, a mother, and the children. But I vowed that the day my children were directly involved in any abuse, that I would rather face the authorities. Because I do not want my sons to think that it is right to beat up their wives, or the girls to think it is right to be beaten up by their husbands. So, one day when my husband, he beat me black and blue in front of all four of my children, I called the police and they served him without injunction. So right now, I am on my own. I can't get a divorce because I need to sort out my status here before I can venture into any of those deep waters. My children and I have been given a place to live under section 17, but our other needs, I don't know, somehow I just have to find a way. So many times, I starve to see that the kids are fed. Children have to eat. The children have to be warm. And my money is spent on these things. I have worked for cash in manual labor, a hair salon, some plate waiting, uh, as a care assistant across about six homes. I also worked once in um, Westminster Council. My boss, he was such a fantastic guy. I wish that I could go back and work with him again. But I had to leave because there was going to be checks. They might lock you up and then you lose your kids. I don't understand because in Nigeria, you don't need any papers to work. But here, everything depends on a, that piece of paper. Well, right now, I can't work and I am not entitled to public funds. So somehow I feel as if I'm wasting away. The people in my church, they help me out from time to time. When I gave birth to my son, my pastor's wife, she brought clothes and other things. The pastor, sometimes he will hand out cash in small denominations, you know, uh, five pounds, 10 pounds. The school are very brilliant in supporting my children. But at the moment, they don't have access to school meals. So somehow I have to eke out money for a proper packed meal. I'm just looking forward to the day when I could find a job and pay my bills and know that my kids are safe, that no one will try to send them back to Nigeria. They do not know anything about that place. 
and you know to be able to give them what they want just as they want it i'm just waiting for the good news from the home office <laughs>